I think we have Peter Morisi with us, uh, tenured professor of economics. I believe that is the case. Yes, there he is. There he is. <laughs> I, want to, I want to talk to you about what we just heard from the president. There was talk of tax cutting, but nothing concrete at all. Nothing. You disappointed? I'm quite disappointed, but he's painted himself into a box. We have terribly high both personal rates on the margin, the high, the high personal rates, and very high corporate tax rates at the margin. Yet he's promised a middle class tax cut, and he's constrained. He can't pass anything through reconciliation uh, that lasts more than 10 years that, that, that unbalances the budget, that, that, that creates more deficit. You really can't deal with all of those problems at the same time. You simply can't. If you're going to do something about high corporate rates, you have to have border tax adjustments. That's out. If you're going to do something about high individual rates, you have to increase the deficit. And if you're going to do something about middle class taxes and high, you know, rates at the upper end, it becomes just about impossible. He's basically promised the American people to put a 110 foot cube inside of a 100 cubic foot inch box. I think we're running out of time. If you don't get a plan in place and you put it out there and you get something done by the fall, you don't get anything done on taxes at all. You agree with that? I do. And unfortunately, the people that have his ear, Mushkin, uh, Jared, uh, Cohn, they don't know very much about taxes. I mean, they pay a lot of taxes. They know how to file a corporate tax return. But they don't know very much about tax policy. Enter Hassett, a good man. The trouble is already diminished status. The CEA has in the past been a member of the cabinet. Now he'll have to deal through Cohn. Cohn is very suspicious of anybody with real expertise, and he's done a very good job of marginalizing anybody that comes along that's that way. White House intrigue has a lot to do with Mr. Trump's inability to come up with a plan. Yeah, and the market doesn't like it. All right, no, Peter. it doesn't like it at all. It's starting to say no. the emperor has no clothes. Yeah. yeah. Now, you're the China guy, and I want to bring to your attention, there was a headline in the Financial Times, and it said, China offers concessions to avert trade war with the United States. Um, you know all about this stuff. What do you say? I mean, China offering concessions seems unlikely to me. What do you say? Well, they're very small concessions. They've offered to do something about beef imports. They've done that before. China's offered concessions in the past and then reneged on its promises. But what's more, we need systemic change. We're not going to get that in China, so we need a whole different approach. Basically, we need a timetable to wind down the trade deficit. The Chinese will have to manage their economy in that direction. They're not inclined to do it because it's destabilizing. Unless we take strong and forceful action like we're doing with North Korea on trade, we're not going to get there. Unfortunately, Jared and the others don't want to do that. They represent Wall Street, New York. Those folks don't deal with Chinese imports, and they really have developed a theology in the economics profession. They're getting support there that says the trade deficit doesn't matter. That's silly. If you think the trade deficit doesn't matter, then it's okay for the United States to owe, owe trillions and trillions of dollars to foreign creditors, because that's what it means. You know, a split White House and a split Republican Party is not a good deal. Peter Marisi, no, it's not. thanks very much indeed, sir.